Hello, welcome to a board deck and dice preview of a game that is either coming to Kickstarter soon or will be on Kickstarter as we speak. This is a very rough setup, setup with prototype pieces, so please bear that in mind while I'm going through the game. In Curators, you are looking to curate your museum. You do this through a neat action selection mechanism and then you are set collecting and tile laying. At the start of the game, you will get your museum with one visitor already there. Uh, you'll get some money and there you will get two goals. Now these are patterns that you want to lay out. Here we want two blues there, two reds, a black, and then any color. And these can be any way round. Uh, but these rooms must be filled with items. So to do so, you have a number of action tokens which start on the cog side. You have uh, money. So when you collect uh, money, you look at how many visitors you have and you get 1,000 per um, visitor. And then you will flip this token over. It has a different picture on the back. Now, this picture is the same as one of the others, and this allows you to double actions. So on your go, you'll take a single action or a double action. So if we'd done a double money, we would get 2,000 per person instead. The carpenter allows you to take from the row of available wings. Now, this will normally be in a spiral going outwards, and when someone gets to the end, they will take one of these tokens and that will signal two more full rounds before the end of the game. To choose one of these, you will have to pay. First one is free and then it's £1,000 for each one further down the line. Simply put, a museum piece must go next to existing doors, your wings, and this wing is worth five points if I manage to fill it with um, artefacts. A double carpenter move lets you take two uh two wings but they must be priced from the first wing that you take the auctioner auction person lets you go to the auction house and buy uh artifacts from there and the more that's in there the cheaper it is it never empties so you can always get artifacts you need for three thousand and you simply take them and put them in your storage this will give you um this can store up to six things here uh, when you use that, you can only generally take one colour unless you take a double action, in which case you can take two. The Indiana Jones hat lets you go to the uh, auction site, to the uh, archaeology site, and take one colour. Uh, you also must put a colour, a same token of the same colour, back into the auction house as well from the supply. If you do a double move, you get to take one of uh, two colours. Lastly is the curator who moves things into the museum. For each curator symbol that you use, you may move one colour. Let's say that we've done this over a number of goes and we've actually filled this entire wing. When you fill a wing, you get uh, to move a, another visitor into the museum. And if they cover these tokens, you get to draw more goal cards, which will give you points at the end. They come in two difficulties and you will have to, you likely have to choose which ones you're going to prioritise. You will not be able to do them all. The game goes until uh, the last piece is taken from here, at which point that person can take one free artefact. You finish out the round and you play two more rounds uh, before counting up all your points from your cards, your filled wings, and uh, the winner is the person with the most points. Hello, welcome to Board Deck and Dice. Today we're talking about The Curators, which is a Kickstarter preview. This is coming to Kickstarter. Uh, hopefully soon, this video will, should be released around the time it's coming, but obviously with the current situation in the world, we're not sure if things are getting delayed and stuff. Uh, and because of that current situation, I haven't got to play The Curators with my regular game group. I've played it with my family instead. Uh, my family are not gamers to the same level as me. I would love them to be, but they're not. So please bear that in mind throughout the review. This has not been tested by me on a gaming audience. Having said that, I think there is a lot going for the curators. Um, I forgot that I'd agreed to do a preview of it. So when it turned up, it was a little bit of a surprise. And then looking into it, I remembered why I agreed to do a preview for this game. I don't agree to do a lot of previews this day, these days because I'm really busy with other stuff. 
but the tile length combined with set collection, combined with pretty components, even at this stage, uh, just really drew me in. And actually, what I most like about the game, um, having come away from playing it a few times, is the action selection system, the way that you're choosing an action that you want to do now, but also setting something up for the future. Because each token tells you what's on the back, and those double actions are super handy. Why would you want to? Why would you do a single action when you can do a double action? Um, and you've got a lot of choice between the way you do that. Do you want to build up uh, your your money first, so you get really small wings and fill them with uh, the artifacts, so that you can get money, but they don't give you points at the end. The tiny wings. Um, but they give you more flexibility in achieving your goals as well. So there's a real nice balance. It feels like, although there's the kind of the main way to score points, there's 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 different ways of getting there. I like each of the five actions. Um, the uh, what's it called? The auction house. When I was reading through the rules, I was worried that that would feel a bit flabby, a bit tacked on. But because the auction house is seeded from the architect dig. It, it just works really well and whenever you go and dig you're giving other people opportunity to then buy cheaper artifacts and buy more of them as well because they they aren't limited to just one one piece uh, so that really works well as well so it feels um, like a game that has had the play testing that has had the balancing uh, the only area where the look and the balancing might uh, come into it and again, this is playing with my family, not with gaming groups where it might be different, is my son on his first game drew some really, really difficult to achieve objectives um, and still not really understanding the game. That really, really gave him um, the grumps about it because it was like we were all achieving our patterns and he was like, oh, it involves like six or seven pieces and I don't know what to do and I can't see the ones that I want. Having said that, he got halfway through that game and it clicked and he suddenly started to see that he didn't need to keep them the same way round, that he could combine them um, and it really clicked. But um, I know everyone gets uh, an easy contract and a more difficult contract. I think it would be good to have some of the easiest contracts of both types as starting contracts rather than just dealing them from the main deck. It would be great to have some, particularly if you've got younger players in the game, um, because there's nothing else that stops them playing this game. The pattern recognition will be the hardest for them. Um, but again, that could be a prototype issue because it's not a finished product. That is easily put into the final product. And the other thing is on those um, cards, just there is a nice uh, delineation between the different colours with shapes, but that's the only place those shapes are. Um, on the actual tiles, the shapes are all circles. So it'd be good to see those shapes somehow represented on the tiles as well. Um, and I'm sure they will be. I'm sure that's just a prototype thing. And that's it really. Two, my two issues are kind of very situational and then what I believe to be a prototype issue. So I think this is going to appeal to fans of set collection for sure, fans of tile laying and just players who want that kind of, what would I say? It's kind of like a gateway plus. So it's not quite gateway, although most of it is, but the little things like having to plan ahead for future turns, having to uh, plan your layout and spatially plan that and work out which ones you're going to be able to fill um, are really, um, really kind of that next level in my view of, of gameplay. Um, the game end is really clear. Uh, having two more rounds you, it does work, it's generous it feels, but it works um, and again that was something that helped my family when um, I was perhaps rushing ahead to get them points and, and close out the game. Um, they still had two rounds and you can do quite a lot in two rounds. It, it, some games that finish in one round you only get to do half your action, so like in this game to score the points you need to get the artifacts into the wings. So having two rounds lets you get some artifacts that you haven't got and get them into the wings. Where Often in, in games that finish like that, you can get the stuff, but you can't use it. So you feel like it was a waste of time having that extra turn anyway. So I love having uh, the extra turn, the, the two turns after the end game has been triggered. The game plays super fast, 
tons of fast, there's very little downtime. I think um, Curators is definitely one to watch on Kickstarter and it gets, uh, uh, even in its current state with the things that I've mentioned, for me to be able to play a game with my family that both of them enjoyed gets a, a very good rating indeed. And I look forward to seeing the final product and how this goes on Kickstarter. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.